Good morning, my dear friends. Today we do celebrate Palm Sunday, and my sermon today is based upon the gospel appointed for today's Mass, coming to us from the 27th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. Whom will ye that I release unto you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, Certainly, if you're anything like me, you make a number of choices. I'm sure the very first choice I made this morning, and possibly you were the same, but the very first choice I made this morning was whether to get up or to press the snooze button. I did that twice, so again, I made the choice two separate times to hit the snooze button before I finally made the choice to actually get up when I was supposed to. Again, when you think about it, and again, I'm the type of person that Quite honestly, I'm set in my ways. I watch all the same movies over and over. I enjoy watching the same TV shows that I've watched my entire life over and over again. So I guess some people would describe me as set in my ways, and I am certainly that. But that being said, there is an amazing amount of choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis and even on an hourly basis that we don't even think about. For example, when, as I just stated, when you get up, do you make a choice to hit the snooze button? Once you get out of bed and you get dressed, you choose what pair of socks you, you're going to wear that on that particular day or what clothes you're going to wear on that particular day. We make the choice of what streets we're going to drive down, what we're going to eat, what we're not going to eat, what brand food we're going to buy at the grocery store. The list is endless. So in other words, there's a lot of major choices that we make in life, but there's an awful lot even more of little choices that we don't even think about it. We just do it automatically. The reason why I'm focusing on choice is because as you read through the 27th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, we hear of the choice that Pontius Pilate gave to the people. Let me step back a little bit. Here in the beginning of this 27th chapter, we find our blessed Savior in front of the Sanhedrin. And of course, the Sanhedrin were the ruling class of Jews. They were the ones in charge. And they had brought our blessed Savior in front of the Sanhedrin because, again, they had levied charges against our Savior for blasphemy. Now, keep in mind, they didn't like him from the get-go. They didn't like him from the beginning because, again, they considered him to be a rabble-rouser. They considered him to, to go around the countryside working the people up against them, quite frankly. And so as a result, they didn't like the fact that our blessed Savior was rocking the boat in their estimation. But that being said, they finally got the opportunity to bring charges against him that would stick, so to speak. And again, this charge was of blasphemy. In their mind, our Lord committed the ultimate sin of blasphemy when he stated that I am. He equated himself with God. And so again, this was deserving of death, and that's what they wanted all along. So on the one hand, the Sanhedrin was able to bring charges of blasphemy against the Lord, but in essence, that's as far as they could go. That's how Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, got involved. Because, again, as I stated, the Sanhedrin could only bring the charges of blasphemy against our Savior, but they could not, again, carry out the death penalty. This is why they brought our blessed Savior to Pilate. They wanted him to do their dirty work, so to speak. They wanted him to put our Savior to death. Now, bear in mind, Pontius Pilate was not one that was seen favor favorably, I should say, in, in the minds of the Jews. They couldn't stand Pontius Pilate. And I guess it would be fair to say that he really didn't hold them to be in high regard either the way that he treated them. For one thing, for example, he took money from the treasury. He took money that was allotted for the temple, in other words, and used it to build an aqueduct to bring water into the city, which in and of itself was a good thing. But that being said, again, the reason why he, one of the reasons why he was not seen favorably in light of the Jews was because he took money from the temple to do that. 
So there were a number of things that he did he did in their eyes that were just were were not any good. So they were not a big fan of Pilate to begin with, and he knew this. If you read through, and again, I'm for for brevity sake, for brevity's uh, sake, excuse me, I'm not going to read the whole gospel passage appointed for mass in this video because, again, it would take too much time, and and I'm short on time as it is. But at one point, it's Saint Matthew writes that Pilate feared for the tumult of the people. In other words. He was afraid that the people would not only turn against him, but would also report him to Rome for all of his wrongdoings and the way that he treated the Jews. So again, one of the ways in which he felt that he could get out of condemning our blessed Savior to death was to give them a choice. And this is the point, getting back to the point of my sermon. He gave the people the choice whether they wanted Barabbas or the, whether they wanted Jesus who was called the Christ. And so as a result, he gave that choice to the people, but through payment, through bribery, through convincing one way or another, again, twisting arms, so to speak, the people were were in favor of Barabbas because, again, it was a Sanhedrin. It was the Pharisees. It was the scribes that pushed the people to convince them to vote for Barabbas for him to be let go and not our blessed Savior. I believe firmly that it was Pontius Pilate's, again, his idea. This was his way of letting our blessed Savior be let go and that way Pontius Pilate would be let off the hook, so to speak. His conscience would be clean. That's why he said again, when he famously written, <clears throat> excuse me, famously spoken, he said he washed his hands. Now, the reason I'm stating all this, quite frankly, is because the people had a choice, and they chose Barabbas over our blessed Savior. <coughs> Pardon me. But again, 2,000 years later, aren't we given a choice as well? Aren't we given a choice? We too are given a choice, whether we choose things of this world or whether we choose things of God, whether we choose the world's way and our way or whether we choose God's way. Even for those of us who call ourselves Christians, very often we don't act very Christ-like in the way that we treat people, the way that we treat one another. We complain about how poorly we get treated, and yet there's very often the, the times that we treat one another very poorly. Again, sometimes, very often, it's not convenient for us, to be quite honest, it's not convenient for us to be Christians. It's not convenient for us to act in a Christ-like fashion, is it? I think, of, and I didn't write it down, but I think of the, the famous quote, the famous prayer coming to us from St. Augustine. St. Augustine wrote that prayer, Lord, make me chaste, but not yet. So often, we treat people the, the way that it's beneficial for us. We we get things and we want things and we desire things and so forth and we spend all of our time thinking about worldly things but quite frankly we spend relatively little time thinking about godly things we focus more on the things of this world than we do on things of the other world the world to come so to speak again in the 12th chapter of saint luke's gospel in the 34th verse we hear for where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. In the society and the time in which we live, dear friends, quite frankly, we see lots of people who not only say with their mouth and by the words that come out of their mouth that they want nothing to do with God, but we find even more people who don't necessarily say those words outright but the evidence is found in the way in which they live their lives. They spend more time chasing after drink. They spend more time chasing after drugs. They spend more time chasing after 
after the opposite sex or what have you. They spend more time chasing after worldly possessions, whether they be the latest electronics or the latest fashion or the latest shoes or this, that, or the other. They spend their time focusing on working themselves or getting themselves promoted, I should say, in their given field, their given profession. But yet, these things in and of themselves, quite frankly, aren't bad. Again, whether it be a nice home or nice clothing, nice shoes, etc., etc., etc. The good Lord is the one who makes all these things a, a reality. The good Lord is, is the one who makes all these things possible. And yet, we know that when we place these things first and foremost ahead of God, that's where the problem comes in. It's not a problem, you see, to want to live in a nice house in a nice neighborhood, but it is when we think about that ahead of God. It's material things are not necessarily the problem, but you see, when we, when we place them ahead of God, that's when the problem arises. Here in this Lenten season, especially as we're so close to Easter, Easter Sunday will be a week from today, dear friends. We should always recognize the fact that God has given us every blessing that we have in our life. We owe all of our blessings that we have, all of our treasures that we have, all of our wealth that we have. We owe everything to God. But that being said, the greatest treasure that we will ever own is our relationship with our blessed Savior. If we can spend so much time trying to worry about our jobs, getting ahead in our jobs, or trying to get ahead in paying bills, and trying to get ahead in buying a new car, and this, that, and the other, why can't we spend an equal or more time worrying about our relationship with our blessed Savior? So much of our time is devoted on a daily basis to worrying about things of this world. And yet, we know in reality, this time that we spend here is compared to eternity is the same as a speck of sand on the seashore. It's nothing. But because this is all we know, this is why it's so important for us. As Christians, we need to spend our lifetime developing a relationship with God. And again, whether it be a relationship with lifelong friends or a relationship between spouses or a relationship with, with employees, again, relation, relationships take time to develop. This is no different than a spiritual relationship. God is the one that reaches out to us. We're the ones that have to do our part to reach out to God. Unfortunately, dear friends, very often that equates to we reach out to our Heavenly Father only when we need something. We reach out to God only when we find ourselves in trouble. We need to reach out to God on a daily basis. We need to reach out to God not just when we need him, not just when we need something, but we need to reach out to God on a daily basis and tell him how much we love him, how much he means to us, and especially at this time of year, tell him how grateful we are for the fact that our blessed Savior chose to carry his cross, chose to be mocked, chose to be spit upon, chose to to be beaten and chose to die on the cross so that he could atone for our sins, not his, but ours. We need to show thanksgiving on a daily basis for the fact that our blessed Savior did that on our behalf. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, God bless you.